But we were undaunted. We're like, okay, well, we're just not trying hard enough. We're just not doing it right. Um, so what we try, what we did basically was like, okay, I get it. Like, we, obviously, we can't pay this much money to acquire free users just because the math doesn't work. Um, so what we'll do is we'll replace. It will make you know nice landing pages for all our keywords, and uh, instead of having a, like free accounts in perpetuity, we'll just do a, a free trial. Um, and then we'll do all these like incredibly sneaky things on the back end to hide the option to create free accounts um, so that you don't have this sort of perpetual freeloader problem. Um, we also tried an affiliate program sort of with the same with the same thing or uh, with the same basic model and you know at the end of the day we still maybe went from thousands of dollars to hundreds of dollars for our uh, acquisition costs um, but sort of at the end of the day, we're like, okay, the affiliate program's a problem because we had all issues with brand and, and different things and um, kind of abusive affiliates. And, um, you know, we just didn't feel good about the hiding the free option from people because obviously if they, you know, they might not have, if someone comes to Dropbox through a paid search ad, but then they hear, about, hear from their friend that it's free for them, you know, it's, we would, even in the early days, we would start getting support requests from people who were confused about that and just didn't make us feel good. Um, so that's one of the, so the big the big lesson there is like if you you're if you adopt a freemium business model your marketing spend really is the cost or really is the, the cost it takes to support all your free users and it doesn't leave a lot left over um, for advertising or, or different things you can otherwise do unless you have some way of offsetting that cost by mo like monetizing free users. But this was sort of the even if like stepping taking another step back this was the big problem. Um, so we were kind of in a new market, or at least a new category, um, and you know nobody gets up in the morning and is like, God, I, I wish I didn't have to like carry my USB drive around, or I hate like Gmailing myself stuff. Um, that's just the way computers work, right? And so the big thing was people didn't realize they had a problem, so they're not looking for us. Um, and people, you know, you did have like people out there who were searching for like you know. Windows Vista file synchronization software, but these were the same people who wanted like, you know, I only want to back up at 2.30 in the morning on, you know, on every other Tuesday and like all these crazy, you know, uh, early adopter features which are, we just did not want to build and it was just like totally at odds with our it just works kind of philosophy. Um, and so, uh, you know, if people don't, if, if people aren't looking for what you're making, then, you know, all the search ads in the world are not going to help you, right? It's, search is great for harvesting demand, not creating it. Um, and there's a good discussion of sort of the differences between new markets and existing markets uh, that I really like in the book, uh, Four Steps to the Epiphany uh, by Steve Blank. Um, but that said, uh, the, uh, the con you know, reaching product market fit kind of cures all sins of management and all, you know, spending thousands of dollars on to acquire $100 customers. Um, we, after launch, we had a lot of word of mouth. We, we went from 100,000 users to 200,000 in a matter of 10 days, uh, and we reached a million by April 2009, and that was really just by word of mouth and, and viral elements in the product alone. Um, and sort of going back to, to kind of the dynamics of how people encounter Dropbox, um, again, you know, they, everybody kind of gets by with doing what they did before with, you know, carrying around flash drives or whatever. Um, but then they encounter Dropbox and they're like, oh wow, I didn't even realize I had a problem. And then like, holy shit, it actually works. Uh, and so that tend, that for us that tended, each user tended to hit some threshold where like, you know, I'm so unexpectedly happy that I'm gonna like now go refer my friends. Um, so, and also the, the thing that is challenging when you're sort of in a new market is it's hard to get people to try your product at all, let alone pay for it. So on the good side of things, uh, you know, you don't have a ton of friction uh, in, you know, it's, it's just a lot easier for people to give your product a shot and then under, sort of, you know, kick the tires and understand that the, the benefits that it provides. Um, but that said, you know, at the end of the day, um, most of the people that you get just will never, put, never pay no matter what you do. Um, and, not, and not only that, but if, you know, uh, a Pandora user or a Dropbox user who, you know, is very happy free user is, is still incurring like all of these you know, hosting and various costs in perpetuity. So they're just kind of a constant drag on your profitability. Um, that said, there are a lot of good things that, uh, about free users if you sort of look at the broader picture. So 
Um, first is they might refer someone who actually will pay, and that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, then as far as you know, trying to uh, grab share quickly in a new market, um, they can build network effects, and just the fact that you know, everybody is, or you have a lot of people sharing files with Dropbox um, you know, has value in, in itself, and then also um, getting a large registered user account and just sort of having a lot of customer data and all these things is, is also really valuable. Um, so the mindshare aspect is, is really important. Um, another thing is if you, can, if you can live without, if you're not completely constrained by sort of short-term cash flow and profitability, you can, there's, there's definitely benefit to, it's, it's a lot easier to kind of sow the seeds and just sort of get a huge audience and then optimize the conversion part later or like really, you know, um, you know it's just it's a lot easier to find clever ways to, to monetize a big audience than it is to get that, that audience in the first place. Obviously that's, you know, you have to be very careful about that, and there's all kinds of pitfalls, and you don't want to, um, you know, there's, there's, I mean, that's a whole other conversation in itself. But, um, you know, if you think of your free user cost, you know, if, if it's some fraction of dollars per year uh, as your marketing spend, then suddenly things uh, make a lot more sense. And for us, I mean, the net result is if we, you know, if we didn't, a lot of our sort of competitors in the same space had either just free trials or, you know, were paid only. And uh, we, on the, I think, having a product for us, or a free product, a free product that people were kicking around a lot, um, you know, it's let us go from virtually nowhere to uh, leading in our space in you know under a couple of years. Um, so where did that leave us? So search was a like a horrible failure. Affiliate program was a horrible failure, um, but we did still, you know, but we we're still growing, right? So. Um, I, you know, I can't stress enough the importance of having a, like a good, you know, all of this starts with like a good product and that was really where we put most of our time anyway. Um, but we made, the, when we, fo we focus on making our users happy first and then uh, they kind of naturally wanted it to spread from there. And uh, so our job was more, well, you know, in addition to making the product good and making people happy, uh, people were already telling their friends about it. So our job then became, okay, let's give people tools to sort of um, make their natural desire to, you know, desire for word of mouth even more effective. So um, the first major thing that we did was uh, put out a referral program, which basically says, if I tell you about Dropbox, you get some free space, I get some free space, kind of, and the two-sided element of that is pretty important because, um, I mean, we've all seen like Amazon referral links or different, you know, one-sided referrals and you just, it just feels kind of like, you know, is this person solely referring this to me for their own benefit, or, um, you know, there's just sort of that psychological aspect to it. And, and um, so the f day one after we released that, our signups went up 60% and stayed up. And, um, you know, every month we send, our users send like millions and millions of referrals to other people. And so um, it's now drives probably 30% of our signups. So just hugely impactful. Um, so aside from referrals, the viral features in the product, like shared folders uh, and some other things, they, those also refer about 20% of, of our new users every day. So of measurable, like direct user to user referrals and shared folder invites, you know, that, that accounts for at least half of our daily signups and probably just sort of more organic word of mouth um, accounts for the majority of the rest. Um, and there's a whole playbook and science that goes with that. but. It's really hard to have a massive, like, freemium product unless you also master this sort of art and science of creating this organic customer acquisition engine. And I think that's maybe one big missing piece that uh, is also really important for people to focus on. And um, we're big fans of this this thing by Dave McClure. It's called Startup Metrics for Pirates. Um, and it's basically, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on it now, um, but it's basically a, a analytical framework for thinking about how you go about acquiring and retaining customers. Um, and that's how we drive product decisions. We probably spend 30% of our engineering effort on things that aren't features, but are more directed at acquiring, retaining, activating customers, things like that. <laughs> <laughs>